And we say a lot that images are key on a website. Um, and so what tips have you got for people? What things should they be considering when choosing the images for their website? Yeah, I mean, good images can make or break a website, I think. Um, there's that, obviously a famous saying about a picture paints a thousand words, but I think it's more than that. It's that consistency of messaging um, and a, a layer of professionalism. But also there's the emotive side of seeing the right image that will resonate with you. So if you think about your website, you've designed it for your ideal customer, and that image to them means something. So whether it's freedom or holistic, you know, whatever you're selling, those images need to back it up. So picking random stock photos is just not a good idea for your website. If you're going to go the stock photo route, that's fine, but make sure you are curating them. Make sure you're trying to use image that, images that you haven't seen elsewhere. Um, and if you do see the image you'll use elsewhere, maybe consider changing it on your website so that you're, you're still different for, from that brand. Um, really, if you've got the budget, a professional photographer is, is, a, is a good route. Even if it's just a mini shoot and you get like maybe five or six photos with them, you spend an hour, you don't break the bank, um, you've got a few changes of clothes so it looks like you're, like you're not, it's just, it's just like a cheapy shop. Um, so there's ways of doing it like on a budget. But um, really getting good photos is important. Um, and if you're selling something like a product, you know, it needs to look good. The photos need to look good. Not like you've done them on a dark day in, on your, in your lounge on your iPhone. You know, you can still do shots on your iPhone, but it needs to be well lit. It needs to be well set up. The composition needs to be good. The tone needs to be good. And that tone and composition needs to follow through every single image that you use on your website. It needs to feel like a complete, you know, congruous, um, experience really um so yeah photos are, are very very important obviously if you if you're doing you know if you've got a food brand and you're taking photos of, of your food make sure it's you, your food not just a random unsplash photo um make sure that you're using a consistent way of shooting them like you might want to have all the same on the same plate or you might want to have the same things on like around it to sort of complement the dish so yeah really think about how you use the photos um, and if you do have to go stock photo route that's fine just make sure you're finding images with the same kind of tonality. They're not cheesy handshakes. They're not piggy banks. They're not smiling like, you know, like if someone who's not even you, like it's all right, we do a couple of silly ones, um, but it's us being yeah. silly, um, not just random people off of the internet. So yeah. Um, yeah. And it's also a good idea to get photos with different layouts as well, isn't it? So if you've got a hero area on your website and you yeah. want to have text on one side, make sure a photo is taken where that can work. It'd be text on one side and the main, like whether that's you or the main focus of the photo is off to the other side and that kind of thing as well. Yeah, that's really important actually. So when you think about a website, obviously most of the kind of hero areas, which are the kind of landscape, almost like 16 by 9 widescreen sort of sizing, I've seen a lot of people trying to shoehorn a portrait photo into those, and obviously all that happens is it just gets their chin and their neck, and obviously that's not great from a from a hero point of view. So yeah, if you've got like you said, image of you with some blank space on, blank space is ideal because like like this wall we've got behind us because you can overlay text and stuff on there. Whereas if you're out in a field or you're out in a busy like public area, it's harder to lay text over it. And a lot of websites you're going to want a nice image. And then some text overlaid, you know, with your key messaging. So you on the right, you on the left. Something that can be cropped to a square, something that can be cropped to a circle. I, can't, I mean, portrait shots are really not as useful uh, on the web. But, you know, a couple of portrait shots as well. Um, make sure you've got everything there. And don't be afraid to brief a photographer. If you've got a photographer coming in, don't be afraid to say, well, I, I was thinking, like, I could, like, have a board here, or I need a bit of space here, and I'm going to point to this because this is where the words will be. Um, and try and get as much use out of those images as possible because you might want to use them on Instagram, and, you know. Which adds to the brand consistency exactly. as well because they're seeing the same photos on socials, they're seeing on website. And actually a good brand photographer probably will think about it and suggest it. Yeah. But yeah, but it is good to be prepared as well so you can brief it yourself. Yeah, I mean, in theory, any photographer is going to think about the composition. Um, there's no harm in just reminding them that what you want to use the images for. And you want to get the most out of your money. Um, so like when we recently did our photo shoot, we made sure we got some that could be used individually. We had separate shots, but we knew we could Photoshop them together. So we'd have us on either side and a bit in the middle. So it's just thinking about that in advance and just making them as versatile as possible, really. Yeah, absolutely.